I'd like to bring Sheila on in a rather grand dress for a grand evening made of the Kiana fiber. And our main purpose here, in addition to showing you the dress, is to tell you that this dress was cut on cross grain, meaning that we placed our pattern on the cross of the grain rather than on the straight. On woven Kianas, I find that is the ideal situation. I had the great good fortune to be the first one ever to make clothes of the Kiana fiber. Back in 1968, DuPont took me on to take the sample yardages that they had made of the first Kianas and to put them into clothes. And it was at that time that I found that woven Kianas, now remember I'm stressing woven Kianas when I'm talking about cutting on the cross grain. I'm never talking about knits or jerseys cutting on cross grain. That would be disaster. I'm talking about wovens. But this dress was cut all entirely on the cross grain. And I think you will agree that we see absolutely the most beautifully smooth, creamy smooth seams and that is because we placed this woven Kiana on the cross grain when we were cutting it. I'd like to explain about Kiana a bit. It is such a dense fiber, which is why it never wrinkles. If I'm trying to make an airplane schedule and I'm running late, I take the Kiana garments and I wad them up and I throw them into a shopping bag and never once have I ever seen a wrinkle. We've never pressed this dress, which has all of this fast yardage in it since the day it was made. My customers tell me that if they spill a drink on Kiana, it rolls right off. I have never, ever noticed perspiration, and I think that's important in the way we all wear clothes today. So here is an example of cross grain cutting. We're cross grain on the sleeve, we're cross grain on the bias. This is another example of how we held in this fabric. I must have held into this fabric on this deep V at least an inch and an eighth. Here, to give it a whole rather grand picture, Sheila, may I get you to pick up your foot, please? We added this bias cuff, or ribbon, whatever you might want to refer it to. I think that can be a beautiful finish for your clothes. Now, what we are here are four layers. In other words, for this three-inch strip, we have cut this four and a half inches wide. I'm sorry, 12 and a half inches wide, 12 and a half inches wide. And this is one time when we did not stretch the bias. We put the hem of the dress, we slip basted it onto the bias. If anything, just gently holding that bias in, machine stitch that first, and then here on the fold, we have put back by hand. But in this bias ribbon, there are actually four layers. I am true bias in this particular instance. I'd like to bring on Cindy to show you, but you stay with us please, Sheila, to show you another example of the Kiana fiber. Earlier, we showed you taffeta in pure silk. Here, I'd like to show you taffeta in Kiana because I think it is interesting for us to see the different fibers. Remember, there are silks and silks, there are wools and wools, there are Kianas and Kianas. I search out some very fine Kianas. This one was made by Bianchini in Paris, and I think it is an extremely handsome print, a bit of a departure of a print on this black background with these vivid colorings. It incidentally is only one layer. This dress is only one layer. Only in this cuff do I have something, and that is silk gazar. If you could find it, I find it the ideal for interfacings, although people such as Givenchy in Paris make it into big, elaborate, marvelous ball gowns. It is made by Abraham in Switzerland, but I find it works so very well as an interfacing. So only here in the neckline, I do have straight grain seam binding, but other than that, this dress entirely unlined, as is this dress, which is the way fashion is going. I like sometimes to add these long, rather skinny bias scarves around your neck. I think it can be a very good look. We let it train. And incidentally, I'm hoping you wear long dresses long enough. I know that it might be a little bit of a problem, but I think it is so very beautiful when you go up a step if you are picking up that dress. I like them to train. I realize you want to dance, but I think you can maneuver that if you will just practice a little bit at home.
also. This is an example of how I try to cover sleevelessness. Now, this young, beautiful Cindy has no problem, but some of the customers who come to me are falling apart a little bit in that area. It is where the body begins to get some creases. So I try very, very hard always to cover this armpit, front and back. In that way, many of my customers, even though they might be getting more my age, can wear sleevelessness. This part of the arm, I find, always stays intact. It is only here where we have to be very careful. This is an example of bias cutting. This front seam is purely on the bias. Where I preserved the grain and where we hand basted that seam, being very, very careful not to have cut into the fabric until all of the marks were there and until we had hand basted this side with this side in sections. Because what I want to do once I get to the machine is stretch like mad as we are stitching that long bias seam from the waist down. Up in this area to the bust, I would not stretch. But once we're on this long bias seam under the, zip, under the bust line, then I stretch like mad when we are stitching at the machine. And incidentally, we are stitching at the machine, at the machine all the time in cotton thread, please. The zipper in a garment that is on the bias, I try to wind up in the back, if that is where I'm putting the zipper, on straight grain. I find putting zippers in on bias grains utter disaster. Don't do it. You might possibly make it work from the skirt down. There, putting a zipper in in the bias is not too bad because the body is not moving there. But as you are moving your arms all the time, if you are on bias grain against the zipper and you are moving, I see the folds of the bias against the rigidity of that tape of the zipper and it is no good. Fine everywhere bias, but not at the zippers, please. May I bring on Jane, who is also in the Kiana fiber, so we have a story here. And on Jane, I think we have a rather special story in that often I'm sure some of you there are cutting from patterns, from Vogue, Budrick, Simplicity, McCall's. And I'm often asked as I go around the country, how about my taking a straight grain pattern and putting it onto the bias grain? And I say I'd be very careful because that can be very tricky. Bias can be treacherous. But however, because I was asked the question so many times, I did take a Vogue Easy. Now I stress the word easy, a design by Stan Herman, which called for the fold line front and back. And what I did was to take that pattern and place it on true bias front and back. And here is what resulted. As it happened, the side seam then went on bias. And that same story of how at the machine when we were there, we stretched that bias grain for all we were worth in stitching. The difference I did make from the pattern was that I held in this neckline very definitely front and back. Because when I asked the model like Jane to sit, it gapped very much. So I held it in. We're going to talk more about that. But this fabric was held in 7 eighths of an inch and eased against straight grain seam binding. The only other difference I made was in the back here where the pattern was gouging out at the arm. I leave wide seam allowances all the time, inch and a half. And here I rolled out the fabric a good 3 quarters of an inch to again cover that part of the body. As it happened in the front, we covered pretty well. The Vogue pattern calls for the bows to be bowed each time you put it on. If you're rushing, I think that becomes a bit of a problem. And then you have the thing of adjusting. We put the seams, to the shoulder together, and then found that it was very simple just to tie these ears, so to speak, and make them look as though they had been very casually tied. Here's that skinny bias again that I favored. And I think if you feel you would like a different change of mood, say, for an evening, you might show a good waistline like this one of Jane's with this skinny little true bias. Or it is an instance where you might very well blouson. I think the blouson is a rather difficult silhouette. But if you have true bias and you are feeling a different mood, then I think this true bias does blouson rather neatly.
we had an interesting time with this dress. It never occurred to us. But once we had finished it and we got to the hem, I realized that we were on straight grain. So rather than putting up a seam, or a hem rather, I asked the girls in the workroom to take a pin and we simply fringed so that the first layer of this fringe is an extension of this fabric. I did take a straight grain piece and we fringed another layer and then put it on by machine to give the fringe more richness, more of a lush feeling. But here you are, three examples of the Kiana fiber, a Vogue pattern meant for straight grain on the fold front and back. Now remember, if you turn to bias, you are going to have to have a seam front and back to do this kind of a garment. Three, this, three versions of Kiana. This Shantung, here a lightweight seasonless satin, and on Cindy, the taffeta.